Hello everyone and welcome back to Fitness and Nutrition Simplified where we break down the complicated stuff and turn it into easy to digest bites that will help you lead a healthier, happier life. I'm your host Ashley Hawksworth and today we're diving into something that I get asked a few times a month and that's insulin resistance. What is it? How does it work? And most importantly, how can we address it in our day-to-day lives? Okay, so insulin. I know you've heard the word a thousand times, especially when we talk about things like diabetes or weight gain. But what exactly is insulin and why does it matter so much? Well, picture this. Your body's like a big giant mansion full of doors. Each door's got a lock on them. And every one of our cells has a door with a lock. These cells need energy, right? The energy comes from glucose. Glucose is just a fancy term for sugar. And we get glucose from the food we eat, mainly carbohydrates, carbs, fruits, potatoes, bread. They all give us glucose, and that's where we get our energy from. Now, here's the catch. Glucose can't just walk into the cells like it owns a place. It needs a key to unlock the door. And that key is insulin. Now, insulin is produced by your pancreas, and its job is just to float around, find each of these locks on the doors, which are your cells, and open them up so the glucose can enter and give you energy. It's like the ultimate butler for your body's mansion. Now, all this sounds pretty cool, pretty smooth, yeah? Well, it should be, but sometimes your cells start acting like they've changed the locks. Suddenly, the insulin's key, or the key, doesn't work as well. And that's what we call insulin resistance. Now, the glucose, because it can't get in anymore, can't get into the cells, that just stays outside, floating around in your bloodstream. And your body then starts producing more and more insulin to try and compensate. It's like we just call the locksmith every hour because the key doesn't fit anymore. And this is where things go wrong. When your body can't get the glucose where it needs to be into the cells, this leads to high blood sugar because the glucose is sugar. And if it can't get into the cells, then it stays in the bloodstream. So we get high blood sugar. With that, we get fatigue, we get weight gain, and eventually more serious conditions like type 2 diabetes. So why does insulin resistance happen? Why do the cells change the locks? So we've established that insulin's a key and it unlocks the cells. But if the lock doesn't work, then why do these cells suddenly stop letting insulin do its job? There's a few big reasons why this can happen. First is diet. So eating a lot of processed foods, sugary snacks, refined carbs like donuts or biscuits or cakes. So this is like you're constantly jamming up the lock or the cells. Imagine if you had a sticky, rusty lock like a padlock on your front door in the gate. Over time, it's just going to be harder and harder to turn the key. Well, this is what happens when we overload our body with too much sugar and unhealthy fats. The cells become less responsive to insulin. Almost like they're saying, nope, had enough. You're not coming in today. We're not letting you. And this is when that key becomes sticky. The second as well, the second way it could happen is the lack of physical activity. When we move, our muscles use glucose for energy which means we're essentially giving the locksmith a hand by making the lock easier to turn because we've moved and we've stayed active. But if we just sit around all day, those muscles don't need glucose as much, so we don't need enough energy, or we don't need much energy because we're just sat around all day doing nothing. So the cells start rejecting insulin. Oh, and there's stress as well. So this is a bit of a sneaky one. When we're stressed, our body releases more cortisol, which actually raises blood sugar levels, leading to 
Yeah. More insulin trying to unlock the doors because the cortisol acts as if we've raising our blood sugar levels when we might not be, we're just stressed. So, I mean, we've not just eaten a, a big bowl full of rice or we've not eaten a cake or anything like that. We're stressed, which means, our, again, our body releases more cortisol, which is a stress hormone, and this actually raises blood sugar levels. So, in a stressful situation where every mansion is every door in this mansion's locked you're like just scrambling to find the key and it's utter chaos that's what being stressed is but there's many stressors life stressors work stressors work out that's a stressor so if we can take time to breathe and pause and take it easy then that stress becomes a bit lower a bit more manageable okay so now we know what insulin resistance is and what causes it there's three reasons diet physical activity or lack of and stress how do we fight it is it just easy eat better move more stress less let's have a look so you can you can improve your insulin sensitivity and you can help manage your body's use of insulin more effectively. So first up, exercise, stay active. So the more you move, movement, that's like oiling the locks on your cells. Regular exercise, especially strength training and cardio, something to pump your heart a bit faster. This helps your cells become more responsive to insulin. Now, it doesn't have to be crazily intense. You can even do a 30-minute walk. It can make a massive difference. So stay active. Walk around the block. Walk along the beach with friends, family, a dog, a pet, whatever. A 30-minute walk can make a massive difference. Obviously, if you're more fit and healthier, more pumping the blood around the body, more cardio, or strength train, even better. Next, let's clean up that diet. Remember those sticky, rusty locks we talked about? Foods like foods like leafy greens, whole grains, lean proteins, healthy fats. These are like WD <laughs> these are, these are like WD40 for your cells. They can help your body use insulin properly, which means better blood sugar control and more energy for you to do things like that, for you to stay active more. If we're not getting that insulin into the cells and that glucose into the cells, I mean, then again, we're not utilizing the glucose. But if we can utilize that glucose, we're not, get, we're not going to get fatigued as often. We're going to actually lose weight instead of gaining it. And we're just going to utilize that glucose by cleaning up that diet a little bit more. Now, speaking of diet... Remember, we need to inclu include more fiber. Fiber is like the body's version of uh, a security system like CCTV or something. So fiber slows down the absorption of sugar and this gives insulin more time to do its job. And lastly, again, like I said, stress management. Now this could be meditation, yoga, deep breathing, or even just taking a few minutes just to relax. Relax and just chill out. Managing your stress levels can help you lower them cortisol levels, that stress hormone. Lower them. Keep your insulin response in check. And making these small, sustainable changes. Moving your body. Eating better. And managing stress. Now, this is essentially just reprogramming them locks so the insulin can come in and get back to doing its job, which means more energy, better health, and less risk of more serious complications like type 2 diabetes down the road. 
Now, before we wrap up today, I want to give a shout out, obviously, to my merch. Whether you're looking for some comfy workout gear or um, just a nice little relaxed, comfortable T-shirt or a nice little hoodie to walk out in or yeah, you can work out in them. I've got T-shirts. I've got hoodies. I've got a nice little graffiti collection as well, which is nice and comfortable. I'm a, I've actually got that on now. So grab yours today. The link is in the show notes. And that, because it's been my, I'm uh, recording this on a Saturday. It was actually my 41st birthday yesterday, as I record this, not when you're listening. So if you go onto my merch store and in the promo code at the checkout, type in, in all one word, type in happy birthday. And it's a massive 41% discount. So grab yours today from the link in the show notes. Right, that's it for today's episode. Hopefully you've got a bit of a clearer understanding of what insulin resistance is. And how you can start taking... The biggest thing is how you can start taking steps to improve your insulin sensitivity. Now remember, it's all about making a small consistent changes that add up over time. Don't just jump in with both feet, otherwise you're going to get stressed and it's going to make it worse. Make small sustainable changes that add up over time. Whether it's adding more fiber to your meals one day, going for a daily walk, maybe go for two days, two walks a day, go for two walks per week. Start out like that, then go to three, then go to four. Just stay active. And again, or you can just find simple ways to manage stress. And with that, you will then have the power to unlock those cells and give your body what it needs to thrive. Whether you've wanted to learn a little bit more just to coach people or... um, tell people what insulin resistance is with a bit more conviction thank you so much whether you are insulin resistance yourself and you wanted to know just what it is a bit more simplified and a bit more clearer then I hope it's done its job and as always thank you so much for tuning in it really really does help me out a lot if you found today's Um, episode helpful please consider leaving a review or sharing it with your friends and family and like I said don't forget to check out my merch and again thank you so much hope you enjoyed it until next time let's keep it simple keep it moving and then unlock your potential again thank you so much and until next time see you soon take care